Okay, so I love my Action 3, but if you are an audio enthusiast or a moto vlogger, um, yeah, over the last year, you have had two major complaints. The first is, uh, even though we have gain adjustments on the Action 3, you still get distorted audio when you use something like a lav mic up close. And second, there is no way to use an external mic and charge your camera simultaneously. Well, I'm super excited to report to you that the Action 4 can do both of those things. So yeah, even though I uh, love my Action 3, I immediately bought an Action 4, and I'm super glad I did because it is interesting how DJI was able to fix the mistakes that they had in their Action 3 with this Action 4. Okay, so let's get right into it. If you see something in this video that you need, I will put links to everything in this video down in the description below. Distorted audio while using a lav mic. So I know a lot of moto vloggers out there like to put microphones into their helmets so that they can um, vlog while they are riding around. But the problem is, is that putting a lav mic into your helmet in an enclosed space with wind noise and engine noise and having it right next to your mouth can cause a lot of distortion. And so I wanted to set up a simulation so that you could hear this on the Action 3 and then do the exact same tests on the Action 4 so that you can hear the difference and how DJI actually fixed the gain issue when you're using external mic adapters. And if you only came here to see how you use an external mic and charge the camera at the same time, uh, you can skip, you can just skip ahead. Okay, so for this test, I tried to be as, uh, yeah, like super scientific as a YouTuber could be. So I decided to use my Rode Lavalier Go plugged into my Boya BYK4 USB-C adapter, and I ran those into the cameras at different gain settings. I placed the mic directly in front of one of my studio monitors, and I played the same exact audio clip, this clip, at the same level over and over and over again. And it wasn't even at like a super loud level. It was like something at like peaking maybe at 80 something dB. And so I did these recordings on the Action 3 at a gain setting of plus six, zero dB, and minus 12 dB so that you can hear the difference or lack thereof uh, with each of those settings. Now the following audio clips all have been normalized in DaVinci Resolve to minus three dBFS. So there shouldn't be that much fluctuation in actual volume. But yeah, be forewarned, you are going to hear distorted audio in three, two, one, boom. This is the reference audio for the Action 3 and Action 4 Gain Adjustment Distortion Test. This is the reference audio for the Action 3 and Action 4 Gain Adjustment Distortion Test. This is the reference audio for the Action 3 and Action 4 Gain Adjustment Distortion Test. Okay, so we can hear that even at minus 12, the audio is still distorted. And now just so that you know that it's not being distorted at the capsule of the microphone. Here is another test recording that I did on my Zoom H6, where I connected my Rode Lavalier, set the gain to three, so that the audio clip peaked at minus 12, and here's what that sounds like. This is the reference audio for the Action 3 and Action 4 gain adjustment distortion test. Okay, so before we get to the Action 4 examples, what is going on here? Well, basically, the Boya BYK4 adapter and the H6 are kind of the same in how they function, right? But the difference here is that um, the Boya BYK4 adapter, it is akin to having your Zoom H6 set to a gain level of, let's say, 8. And so while that might be okay in the majority of vlogging settings, you could see that in this test, I had to turn that gain down to 3 so that we didn't get that distorted audio. So basically what it boils down to is that if this adapter has like, you know, theoretically a gain setting of eight, the action three, when it reduces its gain, is not actually reducing the gain of this adapter, it is actually just lowering the overall volume of the audio recorded into the video file. Okay, so now let's take a listen to the action four in those exact same settings and see how uh, see how that handles it. Now the Action 4 actually has a range of gain from plus 30 to minus 20. I mean, that's like a massive amount. So uh, I still maintained my plus six, zero, and minus 12, like I did on the Action 3. And so let's listen to that 
spoilers, possible distorted audio in three, two, one. This is the reference audio for the Action 3 and Action 4 Gain Adjustment Distortion Test. This is the reference audio for the Action 3 and Action 4 Gain Adjustment Distortion Test. This is the reference audio for the Action 3 and Action 4 Gain Adjustment Distortion Test. Okay, so what did we hear? So at plus 6 and even at 0 dB, we were still getting that distortion because the gain was just too hot. But the second we dropped it down to minus 12 and then normalized it in post to minus 3 dBFS, you could hear that it sounded a lot more like the Zoom H6 recording, meaning that DJI has implemented some kind of analog gain adjustment for external mic adapters before the analog to digital conversion and recording them to the video file. And while I haven't had the ability to test every single microphone I have uh, with this feature, I'm pretty sure it will apply to all TRS microphones that you want to plug in through an external mic adapter, like the Boya BYK4. Okay, so complaint number one, check. Good job, DJI, on actually listening to what people needed with your next iteration of this camera. The second biggest complaint uh, is the inability to use an external microphone and charge your camera simultaneously. It seems like a pretty easy thing to do, right? To have some kind of splitter to do both? Well, like I teased in the beginning with the Action 4, you actually can do this. But I think that the caveat is it requires a specific kind of USB splitter. And that specific adapter is, uh, is this guy, the Belkin Connect Dual USB-C Splitter. So this adapter was really intended for cell phones to be able to do exactly what we're trying to do. And so on one end, there is a male USB plug. And on the other end, there are two USB-C ports. They have specific functions. One has a lightning bolt that indicates the charging port, and one has a headphone icon indicating that's the audio port. Now, Belkin does make a version of this that has a USB-C for charging and a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio. And I do not think that that adapter actually will function the way we want it to. Because I think that that 3.5 millimeter jack is potentially a TRRS that functions as more of a headphone out and or phone headset as opposed to a straight up microphone input. And that's why when you use this Belkin adapter, you still need to use a microphone adapter like the Boya BYK4. So to show you this all works, uh, uh, here we go. We take the adapter, we plug in the microphone adapter and the mic. We plug in the power supply. And with both of those connected, we can plug it into the camera and give it a few seconds. And we can see that, boom, we get the microphone icon and the charging icon on the Action 4 screen. And yes, I have tested this Belkin adapter with both power banks, like the DJI battery case, as well as charging blocks that are plugged into the wall. And on the audio side, I have tested it with microphone adapters that um, convert a TRS signal, as well as straight up USB-C microphones, like the Movo Double Mic UC, which is one of my favorite mics to use with these cameras. So now that we can do that, should we rejoice? Well, um, maybe. I mean, I am super excited that the Action 4 has these capabilities, right? Because it, the, it makes it a much more usable camera when it comes to recording your audio. But really, I feel as though these features should have been something that could have been implemented in the Action 3. And whether or not they still can be with some kind of firmware upgrade... That is a question for DJI, but hopefully this video gets in front of the right eyes over DJI and they then see that we know that this actually can be possible. Because even though I think both of these cameras are great, uh, spending $400 on a new one to have these features that most likely could be implemented in your existing hardware. So that's a tough one to swallow. But if you are looking to upgrade and you're looking at this as well as other improvements that DJI has made, then yeah, it could be totally worth it. So hopefully this video has proved useful in answering some of your questions about the DJI Osmo Action 4. 
And if you have any that I didn't get to audio-wise, be sure to drop them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again real soon.